What is it like being a Jamaican living in Philadelphia in Pennsylvania? Hi, I'm Xavier Murphy, the founder of Jamaicans.com. And today in Jamaicans to the World, I talk to Dr. Karen Dunkley, a Jamaican living in Philadelphia. Hi, Karen. How are you? Greetings and salutations, Xavier, to you and all of your listeners. I absolutely love, love, love this program. Thank you so much for having me from the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. <laughs> all right. So it's a mouthful. Philly is fine, right? Yes, Philly is fine. You know, I have to tell you, Philadelphia is very eclectic. It's a little bit of Jamaica, a little bit of New York, and all of it is Philadelphia. As you know, in recent news, we have had something that has impacted the nation, where we're looking at what is happening just in terms of our response to mental health, to gun access and gun violence. But Philadelphia is still full of love and full of life, and we're going to overcome this challenging moment. All right. So I love, love the background representing. I see, is it two paintings you have there behind you? Yes. Great <laughs> from <laughs> Yard, Mr. We Jamaica. And this is a picture of um, women. And if I may just, I have the flag, which I actually say here, I'm not staging the flag if you can see me. I yes, I could see. Yes, I have this flag, stay like this, but it's just a picture of women going for water, a typical Jamaican scene um, that we have. And I actually, stand pipe. you got stand yes, pipe. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, you have your bucket. So, and all around, I love Jamaican and Caribbean and African art. Reminds nice. us of home. Yes. Nice, nice. So, before we get into Philly, which part of Jamaica are you from? <laughs> the best part. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone says that. I hail from Spanish Town, Ensom City, we come from. I grew up in Spanish Town, Ensom City. I was born at St. Joseph's Hospital. And my parents, I have to shout out St. Elizabeth, the bread and basket of Jamaica, because so much of my youth, especially my wonderful, amazing days, were spent in Eldersley, St. Elizabeth, Dunkley's. So my father, Melvin Dunkley, my mother, Barbara Bowen Dunkley, and just to big up St. Elizabeth and big up Spanish Town and big up in some city. All well. right. I got you. Um, I can't I can hear the Chronics um, song <laughs> in my head. <laughs> that is how I come from. You understand? Big thing. Big thing. Yes. So which school you represented? I have to represent two schools. I must represent St. Catherine High School, so precious to the world. In fact, Xavier, we're having a 75th anniversary, St. Catherine High School, 35 St. John's Road. And we are just so overcome with the many accomplishments that the school community, now a legacy of 75 years of education excellence in Jamaica. So Mahafa Rep, the blue and white, precious to the world, prayer and work conquer all. And of course, I must shout out Wilma's girls, as well as our boys. I did six forum at Wilma's. And of course, we must sit on Marasco Road. Big up enough respect. Age quad a geese. <laughs> and that's how we're rocking. Blue and white. And we're shouting out and spotlighting Wilma's girls and our Wilma's boys. Their brothers as well on Marasco Road. Age right. quad. Again. Uh, boy, well, well represented. If they didn't, they get quite a shout out, quite yes. a shout out from you today, Karen. Yes. So tell us about your journey to Philadelphia. How did you, you end up living in Philadelphia? I journeyed to Philadelphia in 2008. I was a doctoral student at Teachers College, Columbia University. Right living in New York, I am planted. I love New York was cemented. I lived in Queens when I attended St. John's University. When I lived in downtown Brooklyn, Bed-Stuy at the time, when I was at Columbia and then also on Water Street. And I ended up in Philadelphia, my dear Xavier, because my professor of practice at the time at Columbia for a doctoral program, Dr. Arlene C. Ackerman, became the superintendent of schools in the school district of Philadelphia. And our cohort was extremely small. And she said she wanted the entire cohort to come with her to see if we could really transform the education system in Philadelphia. 
Many people may or may not know, but Philadelphia is actually one of the largest systems of education in the entire United States. At the time, we were number six in the entire country when we came in 2008. And so okay. Philadelphia continues to rank in the top just in terms of numbers and budget of urban school districts in the country. So that is how I came to Philadelphia and I'm here. My husband oh, yeah. is here. So I stayed in Philly and, <laughs> you know, and so I'm here enjoying life in the so, big, big city. So New Canada. York to Philadelphia, yes. Caribbean, Jamaican community, right? Because listen, New York is Kingston 22. South Florida is <laughs> Kingston 21. Philadelphia, no. What was it like for you, you know, in terms of you're not going to have all these Caribbean, Jamaican events? Again, prove, tell me if I'm wrong. When you first got there, what was that like adjusting and, and how has the community grown since? Let me tell you something. Philadelphia has a very diverse and dynamic Jamaican community and Caribbean community. When I came in 2008, because of my level of leadership in the school district of Philadelphia. Once the Jamaican community heard that there was this Jamaican educator who was at that level in the district, they would reach out and they would engage with me and they would invite. And so what you find in Philly and the community has certainly grown, but let's just look at the cultural aspects, right? And we benefit, now we have a very active honorary council we have Christopher Chaplin, but so many of the civic organizations and the civic groups nest you like our own independence. You have the Caribbean Festival Committee that is guided by a Barbara Wilson. We have Team Jamaica Bickle because of pen relays. And so a lot of the energy around the Jamaican culture and community came around the time of pen relays with so many people, the, the exodus, not the exodus, but the influx of people onto just the grounds of Philadelphia and the energy around it and the food and the music and so you find that all of the civic organizations in philly really brought the community together to me i've seen a growth in the number of caribbean businesses of jamaican businesses jamaican restaurants i've seen uh, many more I, jamaicans yes that, coming that's what i was gonna say i said if there's a if there's more than 20 or a whole i'm sure there is Jamaican restaurants, we know, they're, we know they're coming. Plus, if you can start to critique and say, this patty shop tastes better than this patty shop, you know you have arrived. You know that you know exactly, have arrived. Exactly, and that is where we are because now, <laughs> listen, it's not just like this is the only option for Jamaican food. But guess what else, Xavier? Jamaican food is now mainstream. One time you had to drive to West Philly. I live in South Philly, which is gentrified. They call it Center City. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, um, Center City going south, but the, the, uh, the bottom line is it's South Philly. And at the end of the day, I can walk to the center of the city in Philadelphia, literally two blocks, and I can find Jamaican food up and down South Street, any of the main thoroughfares, um, right in, in the center of the city itself. So we no longer are designated and relegated to only a section where we can have a little Jamaican cook shop. We have all kind of different restaurants, all kind of different cultural activities. Our faith community, I didn't even big up and mention the faith community like Poise Away with Bishop Poise and just New Testament, uh, how amazing that faith community is. Um, Bishop Bartley, so True United. Uh, you have, I don't want to begin to call names and get in trouble. And Reverend Nielsen. Yes. I was, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in trouble. But the faith community plays a tremendous role in nesting the, and even if you're not of the faith, I'm Seventh-day Adventist. So like West Philadelphia, Seventh-day Adventist Church has quite a number of Jamaicans as well. But even if you don't belong to that particular faith, Xavier, it still anchors you and nests you because if they're having events, they invite you, the civic, the cultural, the politics, um, issues that are social impact issues, like for example, immigration, healthcare for immigrants, uh, uh, status legalization, um, citizenship, everything comes together. So we, I mean, Philly, let me tell you, it's like a, it's a, if, if you haven't been to Philadelphia, you have to come. I have not when you been go, to you know. <laughs> I have not been to Philadelphia and I, I've, you know, I've been planning to come to the pen relays 
and I've not made it there yet, but I eventually will, you know. And I you have not been to Penn all day. I have not been to Penn release. <laughs> Next year has to be your year. It is just surreal. I mean, the energy, the momentum, the just the vibe. You know, Jamaica, we just call it like have enough respect and a big respect vibe. And it's just Listen, it's, you're just beautiful. When you watch it and you see literally um, Jamaica make it. <laughs> yes, it's me. Listen, so when I came here, many people who were non-Jamaican said, oh, you know, they were like pen, 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 pen relays. Now, I used to travel from New York to Penn, but living in Philly and being cemented and seeing it from behind the scenes and being intimately involved, um, whether at the school district, you know, from that lens, it's just a different experience altogether. And I just love being Jamaican. I'm just proud to be Jamaican in Philadelphia and proud to represent our flag, that green, that gold, and that black. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know you're fully in, you know. Yes. You have, I have conversations, passion. You're fully, fully in. Yes. Would you say pen relays um, kind of help with some of the folks that maybe came from, from the New York and some of the other areas, introduce them to Philadelphia, and then they moved into the Philly community? Absolutely. Philly is, a, as you know, Philadelphia is the first city in the United States. It's the first colony, quite frankly. And so it's the best of times, the worst of times, because here you have this juxtap the juxtaposition of, you know, obviously the first colony founded on slavery, right? It's a slave city. It's a slave town. This is where they signed the constitution that denied, gave rights to some, but denied the full humanity of certainly black people and people who looked like you and the majority of jamaicans even though we know we're out of one so here you have the historic underpinnings the richness of that history also coupled with the paradox the controversy of that history coupled with you know the the, the new immigrants that we are people who are legacy people who have been here for 30 years i didn't even know that people lived in philly for 30 40 years jamaicans i meet them all the time there's a karen i'm here when i was when I served as a global Jamaica diaspora representative for the Northeast United States, and just in my day-to-day -day in working with the school district, and as a consultant, they were like, can I'm here for 30 years. I'm like, people, you know, because in New York, you think New York is the only city, like people are here. Right. Um, 30, 40 years, but what Penn Relays, what Penn Relays does, it cements the community, and I'm using my hand, it pulls us all together. So wherever you come from in Jamaica, however long you are here in Philly, it really says this is who we are and you could see all of the new faces our children and their children and the food and the music and just how we have seen the city grown and how we as a community has grown for the first time well i don't want to say for the first time but i think in very rare an instance we had a jamaican who even ran for city council at large and so wow. when you see us beginning to go after political positions feeling that comfortable and anchored enough You've had, you know, like we serve in very high level positions in city government, certainly in the school district, as as I did in city government, in the municipalities, then you know that Philadelphia is moving and we are nested in this community. There awesome. went in, let me tell you, Xavier, a we, a, a yes, so, a yes, so nice. <laughs> right? So let me let me ask you this. I know Pen Release is one of the big events that Jamaicans and people from the Caribbean go to what's the other big event that happens in philadelphia that you know caribbean people jamaican people you know will come out in numbers and and go to i think anything that has to do with independence so as you know last year we celebrated our diamond or jubilee right and so this year is the 61st anniversary of jamaica's independence so when it comes to any independence activity, any gala. We have a Caribbean festival that happens. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Right on the promenade for Delaware Avenue. Again, that's Caribbean Festival Committee. Jamaicans come in drove. The different civic organizations, but no longer start calling them. And it's about time we never call us. But when they do anything for independence or flag raising, or flag raising takes place this year in 2023. August 4th, and it's right on City Hall. It's just absolutely amazing. So you find Jamaicans come out, but you also find something, you know, Xavier, and this is how I'm going to tell you, so you can't, you know, the other Caribbean countries, because of just this 
absolutely amazing collaboration and visibility of the Jamaican community. They come and partner with us. And I love, I always think about Philly in terms of my love for New York, because when I left New York, I cried. I cried because I said, boy, nowhere in a nice like New York, I'm gonna miss. And I slowly fell in love with Philadelphia. And let me tell you, we you're, you're, are doing it. You're certainly an ambassador. You're certainly selling me on, you know, making me feel guilty that I haven't visited yet. <laughs> Maybe next year is your year. I do, it's just so surreal. It is extremely magnetic. It's very, it's a magnetic experience when you come to Penn. And I literally live within walking distance of Penn Relay. Oh, so I know I where I'm staying. Yes, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Literally no, walking just distance. kidding. You if your husband is listening, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's absolutely used to the Penn Relay vibe because then the alumni comes in and, you know, I just love, I remember one day I was walking home from Penn and I saw the principal of St. Catherine High School principal marlon campbell and i was just like oh my god principal and you know here it is that my principal of my alma mater is right there i think we were on chestnut street or walnut street walking up and it was just good to see him from 35 st john <laughs> that i just felt good it was just a warm feeling just warm so, so you touched on um something i was going to ask in terms of the other caribbean nations and it sounds like you know they you know they support each other i find that you know trying to say this diplomatically when there's not too much away right <laughs> in one place sometimes you know we you know we tend to mingle a little bit and and so forth and support is is that you know so it's not like it's a tight knit in terms of the other caribbean countries everybody supporting everybody yes it's very tight knit and i think so we know Xavier, you're right. We know that there is this perception that boy Jamaicans come on with takeover, and you know, and Jamaica is not the Caribbean. I never said takeover, no. I never said it. I never said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know because you know it's something. It's that perception, that narrative that we're saying no. You know, we want to work together. We want to build community. And sometimes people go with what they know. And I have seen sometimes in my experience, people will, will meet. Um, different individuals from the different Caribbean islands and immediately the person might say I'm from here I'm from there oh you're a Jamaican so it's because our culture is extremely visible in terms of a national and an international brand with the music with the Marcus Garvey the Bob Marley the Usain Bolt the sports the culture the food and so that is our greatest export are the talent is um the exports are the talent of our people but what we have managed to do in Philly is to come in collaboration because you're right we are stronger together we support each other we we partnered a lot um with the different organizations we sit in the mayor's commission for the caribbean council together the african right. and caribbean council and so we are a shared diaspora with a shared history and that is never lost on us because in the end it says out of many we are one people and that is a, just as much true for jamaica as it is for the greater caribbean absolutely absolutely so cost of living, what is the cost of living like in, in the Philly, Pennsylvania? Maybe the country is a little cheaper than the city. Well, t talk to me. <laughs> so I listen, on a scale of one to 10 with the cost of living index, if you look at housing, food, vis-a-vis uh, -vis what people earn in terms of the earning power. When I first came to Philly, I would say the cost of living would be a five. Because you would come to Philly, your ticket for the car would be $25 versus tickets in New York being $75. Now, tickets in New York are 100 and change, and in Philly, they're 75 So we have gone from 2008 with the cost of living index. I would put it at a five. You know, the tickets are low. You had housing. Now it's at an eight. Um, we have seen a high rate of inflation that is certainly national and international. Right, right. We've had certainly where I have lived and other communities like mine, gentrification, mm. we see high interest rates. So Philadelphia is not as cheap as it, as it used to be. It's not as manageable as it used to be. We've had increases in property taxes that have been onerous on property owners as well and, um, and just general cost of living index. So I would say living in Philly, if you want somewhat of a quality life, we know that Philly sometimes as a city has, it does have 
some of the challenges that we would mm. like to see when around crime and security and cleanliness and education but it is still an expensive city as well to to live now now okay so it's what, at about an eight so switching to food <laughs> what would you say is typically pennsylvania oh, oh, let me start pennsylvania food Che you have the Philly cheesesteak. Hands down. I am vegetarian. Everyone who comes to Philly, they said, Karen, especially I'm in South Philly. Where can I find the most delicious cheesesteak? And that is the question I'm always answering that question. And I always <laughs> say, go to the Pass Young area. South Philly is where you're gonna find the most delicious cheesesteak. I've never so, seen so wait, it. So, wait. so you're so you live near the stadium, you live in South Philly. Oh my gosh. Well, I tell you, I'm in when the I, when I get here, I'm, I'm right in the area where I can get the best because I eat steak. I'm not a big steak. Yeah. <laughs> and pre pandemic, Xavier, they had the line, you used to see the lines wrapped around the block for the Philly cheese steak, you know? And, um, you know, in Jamaica, we have Devon House. So right. this is another amazing thing with Philly. Philly has one of the best ice cream places, and they're not paying me for this, but uh, so one of the top 10 so just like how devon house made the top 10 list right then franklin fountains also made the top 10 list and i was saying to my husband oh my god can you imagine look at us in jamaica we're in the top 10 in the world for this list and philly's also on it so it just shows that jamaica little about with talo and here <laughs> in philadelphia you know on this list xavier so food has to be the philly cheesesteak but we have amazing restaurants but the philly cheesesteak is our signature food awesome awesome so you know, you got there in 2008, probably a, not a huge Caribbean community. No. Um, what was some of the weird type of questions you would get about Jamaicans? And just give me one, one of your favorites. Language, uh, surprise that we speak English, because I guess not really understanding that Patois is, is, a, is a language that is combined with our African dialect. So weird questions just about language. Okay. And people are very curious. Yeah, like, oh, you speak English? Yeah. And write it, too. <laughs> All right. So what would be, if I was to visit, apart from the pen relays, what, um, maybe it's a landmark, maybe it's an attraction, maybe it's, you know, the sunset by this mountain or this field. What would you say, Xavier, you must do if you come to the Pennsylvania Philly area? Just from a historical perspective, you have to go by the Ben Franklin. You have to go where they signed the constitution. Um, certainly in 1776, you have to go at the, see the bell, the mint. You could see literally the mint where they make the first US United States dollars. You have to go to that historic area. It really centers your understanding of American history and places you in a time period that certainly we were not included, but we were still very much present as black people in this country. You have to absolutely go. Awesome, awesome. So I know you visit Jamaica often. Yes. <laughs> and, and so when you get off the plane and you get out the airport, what is that first thing you're doing or that first thing you're going to go eat? <laughs> when I visit Jamaica? Yes. Oh my gosh, please. I always try and find my Kalaloo patty. In fact, if my mom picks me up, I'd be like, mommy, please bring me some Kalaloo patty. And barring that, then she make me festival or she make me some saltfish and Kalaloo and festival or green banana. But something like that, I need some authentic Jamaican, good up, good up, good up food. I <laughs> must do that. And I stop right on the street corner and get my coconut water and drink all of it and so my jamaican visit so it starts wash wash off the kidneys wash off the heart yes that's yes. what you have to do with the water yes. so my final question is this one what advice would you give to a jamaican a caribbean or someone who's thinking of moving to pennsylvania philadelphia area i would absolutely say come philadelphia in terms of the housing market and certainly the united states housing market it still has some very attractive places that make sense for whether you're single or you have families 
and it is still a unique commonwealth in terms of the state that you can come and you can have a very solid life quality of life if you certainly want to come and have children attend school so i would say consider philadelphia think about philadelphia and at the end of the day your jamaican community is right here because you don't have to go too far enough to buy your salt fish and get your yam your yellow yam it's not like one time <laughs> we have to go to new york every um and and make that trip and go to new york every weekend you can find it right here in philadelphia city of brotherly love and sisterly affection all right what is your typical jamaican goodbye because mine is little more what good no all right. respect. <laughs> Karen, thank you again what good little more respect no respect thank you <laughs> show some love now hit that like button subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell that way you don't miss a video